Escape to the action at Seminole Casino Hotel Immokalee. It is Vegas style 24 7, because just like Vegas, Seminole Casino Hotel never closes. It is pure entertainment anytime you want, and truly, where paradise wins. The classic film, Urban Cowboy, is celebrating 35 years since its release. The award-winning singer whose country music nightclub inspired the movie that starred John Travolta joins us right now. I'm so happy to welcome Mickey Gilly to the show. Stephanie, thanks for having me on your show. It's an honor and a pleasure. Well, it's an honor to have you here as well. <laughs> 35 years, can you believe it? 35 years, and I tell you what, what a changing event in my career and my life when John Travolta did the film The Urban Cowboy. You know, we opened the club up in 1971. I never dreamed it was be gonna become on the world stage, so to speak, but Gillies became very, very popular on account of that film The Urban Cowboy and the Mechanical Bull. Well, I mean, talk about the story because Gillies, it was certainly more than just a, a nightclub for anybody who hasn't uh, tuned into this story yet. Explain kind of the rise and fall of it. Well, the rise started in 1971. It was called Shelley's, and I went down and made a, a business deal with a guy that by the name of Sherwood Cryer, and uh, he changed the name from Shelley's to Gillies, and in 1971, we swung the doors open. The club became almost successful almost immediately because he started advertising on radio and billboards, and he said, you want to go dance and have it a good time? You got to come to Gillies, and all of a sudden, the club began to grow. I got a local, local television show, and I started doing this TV show. I walk in the club one night, and the lady had the uh, jukebox in Gillies. She said, today on the show, you did my favorite song. And I said, what was it? She said, she called me baby all night long. She asked me if I'd record that for 300 jukeboxes for her, and I'd really thrown the towel in as far as my recording career was at that time. <laughs> and I went in to record. She called me baby for her jukeboxes. I picked the old song, Room Full of Roses, for the flip side. Became my first number one song. Met Conway Twitty. Went on the road with Conway, my business partner, installed a mechanical bull to get some attention uh, to start flowing about Gillies again. And lo and behold, we had a guy from New York come down and wrote an article because of the mechanical bull called The Ballad of the Urban Cowboy. When I found out John Travolta was going to do the film, I said, uh-oh, he's coming off a of Saturday Night Fever, which was a disco craze, and he's going to do The Urban Cowboy Country Night Fever. And it launched country music uh, to a, a bigger audience, launched me and Johnny Lee into the stratosphere as far as our career was concerned, and the rest was history. And of course, the rise and fall is the fact is that the club burnt in 1989 because I'd, I'd, uh, I had a lawsuit against my business partner because it started deteriorating, and I wanted to take my name off of it. But uh, since that time, you know, I've opened up some more clubs. Well, what an incredible story. I mean, in speaking to that, when the club did burn down, I, I know a lot of people are saying a part of history went with it. Well, that's very true. But uh, uh, if they watch a documentary on CMT, uh, and I think it's going to be on, uh, let's see, uh, I, I believe it's on uh, uh, t Saturday night at, uh, let's see, y'all on Eastern Time, right? It'd be 9 Eastern Time. Uh, it'd be on CMT. They need to tune in and watch the, uh, the performance uh, because you got John Travolta, you got Charlie Daniels, you got Mickey Gilly, you got Johnny Lee, and, uh, and John Travolta talking about the film The Urban Cowboy. And I think they'll really enjoy the piece. It's really, really entertaining and interesting. A lot of good stars. It, it is an amazing story, Mickey, and I think that these are the good old days, I think, because w would that even happen? Would this kind of story even happen today? I don't think now, so. I don't think it'll ever happen again. You know, it was listed in the Guinness Book of Records, the world's largest honky-tonk, and it was really, really a really true honky-tonk. But, I mean, you know, uh, it was a very interesting time in my life, in my career in the 80s. It was unbelievable. And as we close here, why do you want people to remember Gillies and, and remember this story and, and, and just tune into this documentary that is well, airing? Well, the main thing I want to remember is Mickey Gilly because I'm 79 and I'm still alive and I'm still working and my career is still going forward. So I hopefully that, uh, you know, when I come down to Florida to perform, that they're going to come out and see me. <laughs> we will absolutely, and we hope that uh, you come see us here too in the morning blend anytime. You're invited. You're truly a delight. We look forward to tuning in uh, to this story. And again, it's on CMT, and we're excited that you took some time to share it with us today. Thank you so much for having me on. I've had 17 number one recordings, so if I get a chance to get close to you, come see me. For more on Gilly, just log on to our website, fox4morningblend.com. Start your engines. The Daytona Coke 0400 is coming up, and the Morning Blend has got your ticket to all the action. Put your racing knowledge to the test with this trivia question. How many laps make up the Coke 0400? Think you know the answer? 
Be the fourth person, 239-673-3388 to call with the correct answer. And you win two tickets to the Coke Zero 400 powered by Coca-Cola NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race. And bonus, the Subway Firecracker 250 powered by Coca-Cola NASCAR Xfinity Series race. Now, you can't win, though, if you've won something with us over the last 90 days. So good luck and have fun. Up next, we celebrate Men's Health Month with some truly unique gadgets and ideas that are sure to get men paying attention to their health. Stay with us.